Pakistan is a Soviet economy. We really do not have capitalism in our mind. You saw the tax structure. It's so confused, and I'm afraid my former agency, IMF, has confused it further. We put tax upon tax upon tax, hold many budgets after many budgets. We regulate the economy to death, and we want to grow. I think the most important question to ask ourselves is, do you want to be a capitalist economy? And that's at the heart of this presentation. Or do you want socialism? Many of you might want socialism. Who wants socialism here? Please raise your hands. Anybody? Nobody. Who wants capitalism here? Nobody. Anybody? Only three or four people. Okay, see, that's the problem. We are confused. So here is thing. While we've got 70 to 80% of our economy under the hands of the regulator, the bureaucrat, while they control everything through SOs, NOCs, etc., etc., we also have assets lying around that we don't want to monetize. We have all city centers controlled by the bureaucracy, which cannot be monetized. So here is something that we want to show you. This is the most valuable asset, more valuable than minerals, lying around in downtowns, inhibiting city growth, and readily monetizable, but we can't do it. This is a tax on the system. I was taught in economics, regulation is a tax on the system, as well as state holding assets as a form of taxation. If you want to re don't want to remove this taxation, want people to invest. Just now, Chandasa was saying to me, what about savings? Well, hell, where do I save? I have to put my savings in Dubai. I can't put my savings here. Anybody who does, if any of you have got savings and you put them here, revise your options. Go out. Here is a problem. This is what we saw in Islamabad. This is Islamabad. The yellow is all state-owned houses. You can see right in front of the Marriott, Serena, everywhere. The best parts of Islamabad, the F sector is mostly, F and G sector, are mostly government houses. And here, down there also, we have government houses. And this is not a full inventory. And we've got government building all over the place. Another Soviet Union problem. How do we rationalize this? Are we going to do it or not? Hmm? This doesn't work anymore. Oh, okay. So here we have 1,741, 17,000 houses, 1,325 acres. Have you ever seen the value of Istanbul housing? It's amazing. 15 crore is the re least price. We've looked at the market value of it. If we just market it, pure just on zameen.com, we get 2 trillion rupees just in Islamabad. We are not talking about other cities. Just Islamabad. Look at the gold mine. However, if we better, we actually go ahead and, as for, for example, first of all, in order to get these houses vacated, we are not saying, uh, you know, kind of shortchange the civil service. We are saying give them good returns. So if you are if you are living in near Kosar market, you build get a market-based rental to go out and get a good place. So we did a simple analysis, look at the thing that we've got, for example, grade 22, we would get about 6 lakh rupees extra, six, um, whatever, 0. 0.6 million extra in salary to be able to rent a house, to vacate the house, right? So if we, if we do it that way, as we estimate it, that will cost us 741 billion rupees a month to be able to take them, uh, get uh, tell them to get out. So we expend 741 billion rupees to be able to get them to vacate the house. Fair enough. Big bill. I'm not saying it's a small bill. Very big bill. But then look at that. If we rezone the place and make proper, allow construction to happen, 58 to 60 billion dollars is what we get. It's investment, sorry. We don't get it. Investments. But out of that, if you think about it, 44 million square foot will be made. 446 billion rent. You can estimate the taxation and things, and if public private partnership, all kinds of gains that can be made here. This is capital lying around. With your official reserves. Um, so I'll stop there. No. So the question is would we do that or not? Now, we've got state captured estate here. The real estate here, which is the gold mine, which is out of the market. 
We got regulations which amount to 70% of GDP out of the market. On the 30% that are left, we are taxing them, we are regulating them, and we want them to develop. We want them to invest. There's no magic, ladies and gentlemen, in economics. Everybody wants magic. There's no magic. No amount of borrowing is going to solve your problem if we can't solve this problem of deregulation, solidifying and simplifying our tax policy, not adding on taxes randomly. We want social security, we'll tax. We want this, we want tax. We'll tax, we'll tax. Disrupting business by continuous volatile taxation and keeping markets, systems out of the market. So what we are proposing, if we deregulate, we can have a better set of targets in the IMF. IMF doesn't even get to two months, sorry, two months of reserves after their program, three-year program. We can get there much faster. We can reduce our financing gap much quicker. We can bring inflation. Inflation is difficult. That's monetary policy, not really here. But nevertheless, as supply increases, it relieves the pressure for inflation too. But fiscal deficit can be reduced very quickly. Primary balance can be reduced. Now, the question is, are you people ready to take a radical reform agenda? Are we going, or are the donors just going to get lenders, technical assistance, just going to push us into taxing more? Because we've had so much of taxation, which has destroyed our investment potential. We can't invest anyway. So I, with that, room for discussion, folks. Join in. Not only uh, over taxation will discourage further investment. In fact, the, it will it will trigger uh, capital flight. I mean, this is something that happened to America. Uh, investors they ran out of America. They invested in in in, in China and in uh, um, uh, like uh, Mexico, where they had more tax relaxations. So, you know, the world is open for the capital. If you have capital, all countries are open for you. So when we talk about tax, uh, taxation, uh, taxing certain sectors, we are actually ignoring the risk of further capital flight from Pakistan. That's the, that's the problem. It's already capital scarce uh, country. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Mohammed Umar Farooq from Board of Investment. Uh, the in taxation system, what we have mentioned is the complicated tax structure. The one thing which is very important here is the uh, not inclusion of all the people in the taxation system is also a big problem. Because when some people are taxed and some businesses are not taxed, it, it, it do not give them the level playing field. Especially in sales tax area, if you see, the most of the businesses they, they are not paying the sales tax. So the person who is paying the tax, then he end up paying the sales tax, then withholding tax, then income tax, and then he is bearing the responsibility of uh, all the administrative hassle of maintaining the records and producing it to the taxation authorities. And the taxation authorities in, in return, uh, the, the country is not giving them anything, any benefit. So the not only the reducing the complication of the taxation system, but inclusion of all the people and reducing the rates of the tax are also important. Because as we said, the capital flight is uh, very much evident. Even if we close our eyes and we say the capital is not flying out of Pakistan, we will be living in somewhere, you know, uh, devil's paradise. So we actually, if you see, uh, a lot of industry from Pakistan has, uh, has uh, gone to Bangladesh, if you see how much investment every year is happening in Dubai from Pakistanis, they are investing in property, they are investing in business, and they are doing a lot of things there, but they don't want to do it here because if they get into the net of the government organizations, especially the taxation and the other regulations, one which we earlier talked about, then they, their, their life will be miserable. So they don't want to end up in troubles. Everyone wants to be a safe life. They say, okay, why, why we go to outside of the country? Okay, thank you. Uh, next to the lady. Uh, thank you very much. Amara Durani from UNDP. Uh, I think in the presentation before Dr. Nadim's uh, final slides, the gentleman had a slide on expenditures with a question mark. And there wasn't any further uh, explanation or discussion on that. It was left as a question. Uh, and I think that is a big question. The question for taxpayer, how is the Pakistani rupee which is submitted for revenue 
how is that rupee used so that expenditure piece of the puzzle because there is lack of transparency there is lack of a game plan that is why we are faced with the trust deficit that all the audience members are sharing here so i think it is very important that if we are to talk about revenue generation that there has to be a very clear game plan of how that revenue is to be used when you travel in the us for instance and you see a public sector project on the highway etc you will al always see a board this is how your tax dollar is being used by the federal government for doing development so that's one part if there has to be revenue generation there has to be a complementary expenditure plan with metrics matrices to explain how that would be used now in the absence of an enabling environment in the absence of a low investor confidence the other point is about what how are we going to build confidence in the businesses to do business taxation is a you know it's a second secondary point what are the incentives in my view what we need is a new deal for the private sector what are the incentives what are the credits that we are going to give to the private sector to invest in pakistan if they don't want to pay tax then what are some of those innovative instruments that we can give to them there's a lot of talk about carbon credits but there can be so many other forms of credits development credits development spending credits you know how are they partner of public uh, uh, spending uh, projects so we should talk about some kind of innovative financing mechanisms which offers a new deal for the private sector to come to the table what are those incentives fair points uh, thank you very much ji sir uh, my question is regarding the presentation made by respected uh, dr nadeem ulak sahab dr sahab what would be the uh, sequencing if we do monetization of the housing sector in islamabad for instance uh, Uh, you are talking about changing the regulations of uh, building codes we never witnessed in last 20 to 30 years so what would be the uh, sequencing to undertake such drastic uh, reforms in islamabad thank you assalam alaikum i am tired hand sir the when when we were young and doing journalism we were told that there is a book francis fukuyama he said trust is another sort of capital so do you would anybody explain that without building trust not in the state but at least in the sovereign we can go further i personally understand whatever policy you make it is going to be doomed unless we somehow restore trust in the sovereign and the continuity of policy doesn't mean that the government is going to change that the sovereign would be sovereign enough to maintain that policy not be for example we spend many years on cpec and when you want to build a shop you first need electricity road and telephone for that so the cpec phase 1 was road infrastructure energy crisis was solved and the and the connectivity the phase 2 was just support dukan mein maal dalna so we have stopped here then now we are looking to the other side of the world so unless we uh, build trust so that i think somebody would if somebody would like to answer that yeah thank you so i just wanted to add a couple of things on this fiscal consolidation when we look into the the budget that is actually uh, promised when the the budget is there and then the actual collection or the actual expenditure so if we look into the trend over the last 20 years the gaps remain the same so we didn't learn anything on uh, related to the fiscal consolidation if you look into the head wise what what where is the gap you can easily identify in term of uh, taxes and where the expenditure actually go beyond the uh, limit so that you can easily identify so uh, when we talk about the these reform we also look into the consolidation of those all heads where there is a significant gap and that led to what the, the mini budget as well as so many other Uh, rate changes over the period of time that create uncertainty in the system so the last point that i really want to add in term of the how we can facilitate private sector to come and invest the facilitation this reforms would be the main facilitation but we adopted we try to give them a loan and with the 
the key message that the look this loan is with the, this low interest rate but i am not sure that strategy would work if we look into the last 20 or 30 year about these packages that never work we have to give them the leverage we have to give them the freedom to work once they have that freedom they definitely look for the expansion of their businesses i am extremely sorry uh, nadeem ullah sahab what i am saying will not uh, please you uh, i have some numbers which i want to challenge aapne ek slide dikhai you said you want to achieve 28.8% of uh, investment to gdp ratio based on icor which is incremental capital output ratio incremental capital output ratio is uh, for india pakistan bangladesh sri lanka type of countries we have about four when the growth is low when as you go for a higher growth you have a higher icor which means you need more capitals so uh, if you see the numbers but nadari mulla sahab ne quote kiye aap if you see the numbers china with 40% bangladesh 30% india 30% of investment to gdp ratio sustained they have achieved 6 six and a half percent growth rate which means their icor is four and a half to so you are showing icor of three and a half which is very very uh, optimistic our quality of investment is so poor that you know the public sector development projects and the annual development projects they never complete look at the throw forward so i don't think how it's going to be achieved and uh, मैं 2013 में शायद जावेद बर्की साहब ने एक आर्टिकल लिखा उसमें उन्होंने कहा कि हमारा टैक्स टू जीडीपी रेशियो शुड बी 15 परसेंट एंड आइडियली इट शुड बी 18 परसेंट तो मैंने उनको एक बात कही थी वो मैं उसी तरह की बात आज फिर करने वाला हूँ इतने बड़े हॉल के सामने मैंने उनसे कहा सर टू थाउजेंड मेरी नौकरी में दस साल बाकी है और मेरी नौकरी में हम पंद्रह टैक्स टू जी डी नहीं अचीव कर सकते और मैंने उनसे कहा कि मेरी जितनी भी हयाती बाकी है उसमें मैं अठारह कभी नहीं देखूंगा अगर मैं 20 परसेंट टैक्स टू जी डी रेशियो इस मुल्क में देखूं जहां एस इज इक्वल टू आय है और सेविंग हमने करनी नहीं है दुनिया में हमसे ज्यादा खर्चीली कौन कोई नहीं है तो आप कह रहे हैं कि 28 परसेंट इन्वेस्टमेंट आप लेके आएंगे मुझे नहीं पता कहा से लेके आएंगे बगैर सेव किए आई एम सो सॉरी थैंक यू नंबर डोंट एड अप वन लास्ट कॉमेंट फ्रॉम आमिर दुरानी थैंक यू वेरी मच जस्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन just one comment from mr tar jansan not to take away, take away from the last speaker tar sahab dukan pehle dali jati hai rode rode baad mein banti hai ye duniya ka asool raha hai pehle aap cheez sab karte hain fir aap dekhte hain aapne social security gate kya lagana hai ye thoda si kham khayal rahi hai ki if you build it they'll come so the issue is that our dear friend tar jansan said that the cpec 1 was about putting the roads the energy and now everything is solved and we have energy 24/7 i don't know where pakistan but even having said that i think there is a very wrong uh, sort of uh, event sequencing that is happening in all our discussion which is let's build 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 if you build it they will come i think barring that movie that we've seen it's about dreaming right the rest of it is things happen people meet trade starts think i look at dubai you know it has always outstripped its infrastructure in terms of what it's actually delivering whether it be seat kilometers or people coming but the questions i have for you is that on the sludge the first presentation uh this is essentially where everybody is busy looking at the environment for business right can we also start looking at how are the businesses performing because pakistan happens to be and we are sure of this now the only country in sort of our neighborhood or even you can pick up the oecd countries or us where we do not have an sme or a business performance index so we keep ticking boxes we have bois and this so you know that is something we need to really really understand that what has business done with all the reforms we've done right. um the second point a question for you is this multiplicity of reforms we're not talking about now this is not the time of socrates or plato let a thousand flowers bloom i mean because we really believe sometimes the multiplicity of agenda so let me give you a practical example un brings a 1 million dollar project world bank brings a 1 billion dollar project they both suck the same amount of resources from our bureaucracy in terms of follow up appraisals ead etc 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 that's just one side of the coin so can we stop with these dope rope hope acronyms that are just flourishing all over the place and really understand that who in pakistan looks at 
harmonizing a reform agenda look is even sifc harmonizing on digitalization the new finance minister is he talking to the existing world bank project that's already there to do that the third core question is can dr nadeem or someone from pi please make us understand when they say tax what is tax the rule of taxes collect where you need to spend so can he just explain what do they mean of these tax ratios outside of the colloquial or vernacular or intellectual or academic definition of the tax for a normal person what do they mean by tax thank you okay fine uh, one comment uh, online from uh, shahid kardar sir thank you very very quickly i raised my hand on the the uh, deregulation part as well i think guillotine is the only way what worries me is this reference to another act for guillotine frankly we will not get anywhere so just guillotine them and get them to come and defend the reason for any act and we can, I can only think of three four areas where we don't need to guillotine them at this stage and i won't go into them sorry i'm on a walk right now i try to get in. the other thing i think which is missing and uh, nadim will uh, kind of uh, dwell on it maybe not at this forum but really the issue is the expenditure side of the fiscal equation i know there is a reference to the fact that they will bring it up again but without looking at that part i really don't want to look at the taxation i've been very much a part of what the work you're doing on on ta- taxation but very but we are very clear there that the expenditure side is critical is critical because if we don't look at the expenditure side we will end up spending huge sums of money with in- increased revenue setting up more regulatory authorities and so on and so forth and not just regulatory authorities but new institutions none of them would be productive so until we look at the expenditure side someone referred to the psdp I mean, that's precisely the point. This is the PSTP that none of us would hear support. So anyway, I'll stop here. And I think the third part only, and just to end, I think we need to look at the sequencing, which is the critical part as to what is more critical. To me, this, the sequencing part may not be that critical at this stage. I'm not saying it is not required, but it is certainly required. But if you start from the monetization part and other things, that can come a little lower because we are referring to things that need to be done in the short term because so stop here very good ji i'll try and answer some of the questions although i don't think i remember all of them very quickly sequencing is important there's no doubt about it i think the most important thing is to do the deregulation fast that's why i agree with shahid sorry uh, dilwakar sahab i think act the long wrong way to go too fast sorry too slow and unfortunately setting up more regulation let's go for a regulatory guillotine what's the problem with liberalizing the economy india did in 1991 dubai just did it liberalized on a liberal economy we are sitting in a soviet economy we don't want to liberalize so that's the first thing i think we should do immediately secondly cutting the size of the government is very important but i'm afraid the world bank did a public expenditure review and there's no recommendation for cutting the size of the government so i think we really need to get cracking on cutting the size of the government they are talking about reducing ministries in the central government yes of course but we need to go much further how many agencies are there hundreds of agencies that are doing nothing we can disband the 400 regulatory agencies the mukarram sahab said 122 we counted in islamabad 150 training agencies there are about 100 think tanks in islamabad what are they doing including pig if donors are going to do the work let's the free touch let's think really about saving money chenna sahab talk about domestic saving but for god's sakes the government this saves the most chenna sahab i think we have we are savers we are not spending money i'm sorry we save in real estate we save outside we'll bring the money back into the system if you allow us to if you don't allow us to we won't bring back the money into the system if the bureaucracy wants to control the economy then let's have soviet union let's agree on monetization yes you are right mehtab we for it failed before but the reform on which we must begin i know it won't be done in overnight but the direction must be set that state assets will be used state assets will not lie empty 
like the Constitution Avenue, whatever that, that um, you know, what's, what you call it, the bloody convention center, lying empty, Jinnah Stadium lying empty. Let's not build things. Shayad is right. Stop the PSTP. So there are all these things that we want to talk about and we're going to talk about them. Mm-hmm.